Hello Rambler fans and welcome to this week's edition of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Grace Runkle. And I'm Allison Krakowiak. Grace, did you know that today is National Weather Person Day? No, Allison, I did not know that. And I guess they do deserve their own day. They need some recognition. I mean, they accurately report the unpredictable weather every day. And you know what? I think I'm going to try to predict the weather right now. Okay. As we speak, a warm front is coming towards the Midwest, and I can guarantee that it is going to be in the upper 70s and sunny and warm for the rest of the month. Thank goodness. I know, oh right? Gosh. You know what? You're actually really good at predicting things too, right? You, your Super Bowl predi prediction was the best in the Phoenix, right? Yes, Grace, that is true. But, you know, making predictions is not as easy as you think it might be. Um, unless you're a psychic, which, you know, unfortunately, I am not. But luckily for us, we do not have to predict the weather. We get to report on Loyola sports. So, let's stick to what we do best. Loyola's men's basketball team traveled to Springsfield, Missouri last night to take on Missouri State. The Ramblers started off strong in the first half, playing exceptional defense and going into halftime with a lead of 31-19. Ben Richardson, a freshman from Overland Park, Kansas, made an impact on the game with a season-high 12 points. But the Missouri State Bears did not give up. Instead, put up a fight in the second half and led the Ramblers by two with six minutes left in the game. Earl Peterson contributed 12 points and Montel James had 10. Overall, impressive play by the Ramblers, with only five turnovers, led them to an exciting win away from home, 53-50. Loyola improves to 14-9, 4-7 in the Valley. Not only did the men's basketball team see victory, but Loyola's track and field team has been having a successful couple of weeks as well. In this week's timeout segment, Rambler Sports Locker's own Jake Mazinki will sit with Loyola track athlete Jake Mazinki. Wait. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the timeout. Today I have special guest with us Jake Mazanki, a junior member of the track and field team. Now Jake, what have been the highlights so far this season? Both the last two weeks I've run at Indiana University. Uh, first week it was the Gladstein Invitational. I ran the 800 and ran a personal best and won the meet, which was awesome. And then last weekend I went back to Indiana and ran at the Indiana Relays. And I was lucky enough to get a win in the 600 and ran another personal best. So I think early on in the season, I've been running, running well and been really happy with my efforts out on the track. Uh, I think, you know, it's been a good sign of, of things to come and the fact that I'm running well early um, is gonna bode well for the rest of the season. Now, it seems like you've had a successful season so far. What has led to your successes? I think a lot of the early preparation uh, came from the fall and summer. Early on in the fall, uh, I found out that I would be training under our head coach, Randy Hasenbank, which I'd never trained under before. And I think I've really strived under his training. He's helped me grow as a runner and really increased my fitness to um, be able to handle a lot more races, a lot more workload. Also, I think my training group has been very instrumental in um, running fast early in the season. Um, our whole group has been running really well so far this year, and I think the fact that we can all train together and work together uh, is instrumental because we really push each other each day. Um, between those two, I think that's really what's helped me um, elevate my um, competition this season and think run as well as I have so far. I know you have a big meet coming up this weekend at Notre Dame. What are your expectations going into the weekend? Um, extremely excited for mail this weekend. I'm running the 800 and the 4x4 and this is an opportunity where we can get on a big track. Uh, at Notre Dame it's 320 meters, it's the biggest indoor track in the country and we a lot of people run really fast times there and I'm extremely excited to get uh, get in a competitive field and really see what we can do um, both in the 800 and 4x4. I think it should be a great weekend for us. And I know we've talked a lot about track today. What are your aspirations after school ends? Actually, after I graduate, um, I'd love to pursue journalism, hopefully cover sports. I think that would be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, actually the, the place you're sitting right now doesn't look so bad, being able to interview athletes and such. <laughs> well, you might be in this seat much sooner than you think. Thanks so much for coming, Jake. And back to you guys at the desk. I mean, I've seen a lot of selfies, but a self-interview, that's not something you don't see every day. Switching to something we see more often, Loyola's women's basketball team competed this Sunday. The Ramblers lost to Illinois State Redbirds at Redbird Arena 72-56. The Ramblers were tough contenders sticking with the Redbirds for the first 10 minutes of the game until Illinois State went on a 12-2 run. 
The Redbirds' momentum carried on from there, and the score at halftime was 40-25. to The second half didn't go much better for the Ramblers, and the Redbirds maintained their lead for the rest of the game. Loyola will be hosting the Evansville Purple Aces this Friday at 7 p.m. in Gentile Arena. Two student athletes recently filed suit against the University of North Carolina and the NCAA for not receiving a quality education. Molly Brewer checked in with one Rambler who believes this isn't the case at Loyola. Student athletes at Loyola University Loyola Chicago are held to the same mm -hmm. if not higher standard than other students. Mind. Senior women's basketball player Molly Crosby believes that this is a blessing. Crosby has maintained a 3.5 GPA despite a rigorous practice and travel schedule and balancing a psychology major and two minors in women's studies and Spanish. It's been a bit huge dream of mine to be a Division I athlete and I'm so thankful for that experience, but uh, my academics is really what's going to like carry me through. Student athletes are held accountable just like any other student here is held accountable. Um, you know, they have to do the work themselves, you know, they have to study themselves, um, they have to do everything that all the other students do. You know, so it's not like they're giving, treated differently because they play a sport here. Sometimes it's challenging, balancing it around what treatment time you're going to have or what practices are going to be hard and what days are going to be harder than others. You'll never hear me refer to them as so basketball players or basketball athletes as nor student student athletes because that student part always comes first. If you want to be pre-med, be pre-med. If you want to uh, go into business, major in business. Um, we're here to support you. We get to follow our dream and like experience something that all of us have dreamed about since we were little kids. We wouldn't change it for anything. Although Crosby admits that it can be stressful juggling class and basketball, she credits the university for an amazing student and athlete experience. For Rambler Sports Locker, this is Molly Brewer. Molly Crosby was one of more than 100 Loyola student athletes to make the MVC honor roll last year. We can't wait to see what she brings on and off the court this season. There was a time where basketball's greatest team consisted of all African American players. Their struggle for professional equality is one of the greatest stories in the history of sports. Over to Blake Keller for This Week in History. In honor of Black History Month, we will discuss the life of Robert L. Douglas this week in history. On February 5, 1972, Douglas, otherwise known as the father of black basketball, became the first African American to be inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. He began his legendary career by organizing two amateur teams, known as the Spartan Braves and Spartan Hornets, who played across the state of New York from 1919 to 1923. As Douglas progressed through his career, he organized an all African American basketball team, the Harlem Renaissance, who got their name by cutting a deal with Harlem's Renaissance Casino to gain more publicity. In 1939, the Rens defeated the all-white team Oshkosh All-Stars for the World Professional Basketball Championship. The Harlem Rens' three-decade-long career accumulated an impressive record of 2,588 wins and 529 losses. Unfortunately, despite all their success, they were never admitted to the professional leagues. Douglas's influence, however, paved the way for social equality in sports and the emergence of other color teams, such as the Harlem Globetrotters. For This Week in History, I'm Blake Keller. Douglas's fight for professional equality and the Harlem Rins incredible record deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame, and they've both been an influence to many African American players still today. The men's volleyball team improved to a 7-0 this weekend when they beat the Barton College Bulldogs in straight sets. Several sports locker members, both current and alumni, were in attendance. The Ramblers were down starters Nick Olson and Cody Caldwell for the entirety of the match. Barton played Loyola tight early and got the score to 15-14 in the middle of the first. But it was all Ramblers from there as kills from Thomas Jeske, Owen McAnders, and Jeff Dendrick helped Loyola take the first set 25-19. Trevor Novotny helped the Ramblers take a 3-0 lead, but the Bulldogs followed it up with a 10-5 run to get their biggest lead of the night. It was all Ramblers from there as Jeff Dendrick hammered one of his 10 kills to give the Ramblers the lead. Kills from Trevor Novotny and Ben Plasted helped the Ramblers take the set 25-19. The Ramblers jumped out to an 11-7 lead in the third set thanks to a couple of Thomas Jeske's team-high 14 kills. One of Trevor Novotny's six kills helped end a Barton comeback and Thomas Jeske continued to barrage the Bulldogs throughout the set on the way to straight set sweep. The Ramblers look to continue their dominance as they travel to McKendree and IPFW this weekend. 
Not only is it Weather Person Day, but it is also Throwback Thursday. To celebrate, Allison and I dug into the Sports Locker archives and found some lost footage featuring Locker alums Megan Carabelli and Joe Flaherty. Standing passengers, please do not lean against the doors. surfing people call it a sport but it's more a mindset you know the L is my primary route of transportation even uh, back home when I'm living at home so it's the little kinks and curves of the L when you get used to standing up on it you know kind of get in the groove there and then you notice other people trying to do it and you just want to prove that you can do it better than everyone else L surfing is like the competition of life, you know, like if you fail at L surfing, you kind of sort of fail at life. It's, it's really all the same. There aren't any points um, or any way to win. We basically just, I mean, put a wager on that given situation. And if we're going to IHOP, I'm betting you a short stack I could outlast you. Yeah. He's gone. Too bad you're walking away from my red line. I already just won a match. Against who? Yourself? It's not hard. It's not hard. I've only fallen once doing that. I, I only fell once L surfing with myself. I also um, ripped my pants once L surfing, which I, I do very often, but I, I definitely one time was like, got a little too into the Sheridan red line turn, and when I went down on one knee to kind of finish it, it just it split wide. And uh, I still won that match, though. Got a little breeze, but I, but I definitely won. Wilson, there's a tiny little snake turn. I'll surf for the rush. There is nothing more exhilarating than standing on the L with a group of people and not saying anything and not touching anything. Because you find yourself standing more than 50% of the time on the L. And I just want to be the best person standing on that L. You gotta get the plane, the plane of the, of the turn. So, so the air goes over Yeah, so you can make it. And you can wait, jump coming. High five. Clean ride. Oh man, I know all about that Sheridan Shake. It gets me every time. Sheridan Shake? I thought it was the Wilson Wobble. Anyway, this Sunday we saw that there is no justice in sports. Our friends on the Weekly Ramble compete to find out who hates the Patriots the most. There are no wrong answers, so this should be good. <laughs> Hey y'all, and welcome to this week's Weekly Ramble. I'm your host, Milop Mehta, and I'm here to introduce our Ramble topic. Before we get started, I would just like to give out my, and Rambler Sports Locker's, most sincere apology to all of our viewers out there. I know y'all had to suffer through that Super Bowl, which was just, just awful. There's clearly no justice in this world. So I'm just going to introduce our two contestants. We have our returning champion, Mr. Gay Perez, and the challenger, Ms. Madeline Kenny. And we are going to get started with our question, which is, why should we, for the myriad of reasons that are out there, hate the Patriots? There's really no long answer, so. Well, a lot of people do really hate the Patriots, but for me, something that I really hate a little bit more than the Patriots is Pete Carroll. You just managed to find the wrong answer in the question without Pete the wrong Carroll answer. Pete Carroll had one job. He had one job. He called a passing play when they were on the half yard line. They were right what? there. Okay. They had right there. Okay. Right a there. lot of options they could choose from. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you guys stop for a moment. Uh, what was the question I asked? It was why should we hate the Patriots? But the issue here is not the Patriots. It's, it's Pete Carroll. And our hatred towards him. That's that's no 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 no. This is why yes. should we hate the Patriots? Go talk. You could hate on Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Tom Robert Brady Kraft. Tom Brady is number 12 on the field, but number one in a lot of women's hearts. Let me tell you that. I, I have no rebuttal against that. I, I, I can't say anything against that. 
What about Tom Brady when he starts crying? Or, you know, when he gets his... That's because he's sensitive. There's nothing wrong There's with nothing. that. I cry sometimes when I'm at home. What about when he punches little notebook? children thinking they're footballs, huh? Does, do, we, well, do we just let that well, go? Well, they're probably deflated, so... Doesn't that make it worse? I don't know. Because, you know, it, it, uh, it doesn't really matter because there wasn't proof. But yes. there was the proof. Carol scandal at USC. <laughs> yeah. Why are we still talking There's about... There's proof about that. Okay, can, can we please just get to, to the topic, which is why we should hate the Patriots. We're running out of time, y'all. Come on, the Patriot bashing begin. The issue is Pete Carroll. See, I'm patriotic, so I'm gonna have to go with my hatred towards Pete Carroll and how Marshall Lynch is sponsored by Skittles. We already confirmed that M&Ms are right better now. during, we're not sponsoring anyone. No, okay, okay. You know what? No, th this, I'm done. I'm done. All right, we're going to, for the second time, apparently, in a couple weeks, too, which is shocking, have an all-new cast out here because this is also, an absolute outrage. And that means that neither Gabe nor Maddie will be returning to this desk next week. Excuse me. Wow. I thought we had very nice points. Just like Pete Carroll getting... The trans question was kind of Once biased. again, once again, this is why we should hate the Patriots. Look at the rift they've created between us. If you saw us before the show, we were laughing, having fun. Great time, Skittles. excited for what was going on. And then, boom, the Patriots come up. And then nothing. Now there's hatred. So, towards Pete Carroll. because of this nonsense, I would just like to turn in my theoretical fan card and denounce my diehard fandom of football. Because, honestly, just, just, just what's happened with New England is an absolute outrage. A team that should have never even made the Super Bowl is there and winning off of the most ridiculous things ever. Clearly, there is no justice. In fact, I would walk off this set right now, except my mic is connected to that thing, and that <laughs> means that everyone in the back room would have, like, some, their ears would kind of explode. So I'm not going to do that, but I am going to send you all back to the desk. Enjoy the rest of the show, everyone. Go Broncos. Yes. Best comment you've had all day. <laughs> Wow, I cannot believe that just happened. What do we do? I don't know, but this is a huge loss for sports entertainment. Sports fandom will never be the same. Let's help pick things back up and let's roll this week's viral video. literally hashtag winning. Speaking of hashtags, make sure to follow us on all the handles that you see below. And with that, I'm Allison Krakowiak. And I'm Grace Runkle. Thanks for stopping by the locker and don't forget to turn out the lights.